This is Johnny Harris. Okay, so whatever, I'm a journalist, but I kind of hate the news. He suggests, The news often tells you what isn't actually happening in the world. The information available to us is the stuff that doesn't happen very often, the stuff that's actually an aberration from the norm. We get a distorted view of how the world works. But the news is new information of interest, reports of current events. So repeated information and historical events might not be news, it might be education. I think there's a really blurry gradient between educational YouTube, that is a firm-footed thing that has already been pioneered. And I think I'm more on the journalism side in the sense that I'm going out, I'm trying to report on things that are happening today with data and evidence and interviews and, you know, sort of a more journalistic craft. Which we'll come back to, but he has said, The news has become way too fun. Prioritize entertainment and false feelings of this is important or this is scary. It's like it becomes a giant gossip fest almost. However, using his words, I, I believe big time in presentation and style that like those two things are equally as important to me as story. Suggesting presentation is important, but he doesn't like a certain type of presentation for news. Going on to say, In short, it's meant to keep the people informed and aware of what is important in the world. Which the news does, but as news outlets have adapted to media trends, the way people watch, read and listen to news has changed. And these changes aren't without consequences. It's been reported the internet is used by 66% of people in the UK for their news, 6 in 10 Americans getting their news from Reddit, Facebook and Twitter back in 2016. So when Johnny says news, it would be helpful to clarify where the news was coming from. A friend, reporter, presenter, journalist, whistleblower. Gatekeeping is common. Gatekeeping bias, which is the preference for selecting stories from one party or the other. Coverage bias, the amount of coverage given to different sides in a debate. Statement bias, whether favourable or unfavourable opinions are present. For example, when Martin Croxel, a BBC presenter, was taken off air after a gleeful reaction. She presented news in a way that the BBC didn't want. Which I think is what Johnny is getting at. Not news as a problem, but the presentation of news. The news tricks you into feeling informed. Saying, This is not journalism. This looks like journalism because it looks like there's a robust debate going on. But journalism and debating have different roles in communication. Journalism, the style of writing consisting of direct presentation of facts or events with an attempt to minimise analysis or interpretation. But debate is discussion, which is to talk about a subject with someone and tell each other your ideas or opinions. As Johnny says, Journalism is about evidence. It's about going out and gathering evidence and scrutinizing it and then putting it together and presenting it to a reader. But adding interpretation, opinion or style could be presentation, not entirely journalistic. Journalistic integrity for mainstream media is important. Qualifications, standards and expectations try to hold those reporters and presenters accountable. If you have integrity, you are honest and firm in your moral principles. This includes accuracy, fairness, objectivity, balance and transparency. But Johnny's journalistic integrity has been heavily questioned in the past. This is not journalism. This is a piece of propaganda. So that's literally using the research that I've been working on for 15 years without citation to put money in the bank. Should I sue? I think he goes too far with the whole storytelling bits. He's playing this up a little bit too much. With discussions saying his videos are loaded with historical inaccuracies, misleading and almost political rhetoric. When it comes to learning about inflation, Johnny's video does more harm than good. And unlike in Martin's case, Johnny is independent, so is accountable to who he chooses. But this is where intention complicates presentation, or communication. The internet didn't bring false news or fake news to the world, but 
the internet has allowed for the proliferation of false or misleading news stories. Fake news described as the deliberate creation of pseudo-journalistic disinformation. However, these two scenarios illustrate the issue pretty well. Lois, a journalist, publishes a story which she has carefully researched, claiming that there is a link between drinking a brand of soft drink X and an increased risk of cancer. Lois cites well-respected and peer-reviewed scientific sources to back the claim she makes in her story. Lois's intention here is to produce a factually accurate news story. However, a year after her story is published, it turns out that new scientific evidence has emerged, proving the sources cited in the original news story wrong, meaning that the claims made in her story are factually incorrect. Howard invents and publishes a story accusing a prominent politician of murder. The claims are completely unsubstantiated, Howard has no evidence supporting the claims, and his motivation for publishing them is not to inform the public about true facts, but rather to harm the accused politician politically. Alternatively, the motive could also be financial gain. However, unbeknownst to Howard, it emerges after the publication that the story was correct and said politician is in fact a murderer. Both could be classed as disinformation at different points in time with drastically different intentions, be them good or bad. Some have argued that fake news is best conceived of as something that can arise independently of anyone's having intended to produce it, suggesting and supporting claims that consumers should look to multiple sources upholding journalistic integrity. But Johnny has said, I think the idea of trusting your viewer to go fact check everything you say is irresponsible and naive. Alluding to an assumption Johnny seems to make with his content, that the content he creates holds up to high levels of journalistic integrity, so consumers might not need to look elsewhere. But as the lowest example illustrates, time can change interpretations on content emphasising the importance of documenting research and retracting or correcting content as time moves on. Those with high levels of journalistic or creator integrity should have no issue with this. But Johnny's past actions are questionable, omitting sources, poor research quality, which he suggests was due to reduced resources. It's a beautiful experience, and it's honestly what taught me everything I know, is having that editor relationship, mostly with Joss Fong. Um, uh, leaving Vox, I gave that up, and um, I don't have an editor. Which was helped when he hired others. She came on and has this journalistic background. I can go send her on a topic, and she'll go super deep and use the journalistic skills to come back with an info doc. However, as mentioned earlier, Johnny said, and I think I'm more on the journalism side in the sense that I'm going out, I'm trying to report on things that are happening today with data and evidence and interviews and, you know, sort of a more journalistic craft. But he has also said, But really, at the end of the day, I'm taking a lot of information and I am packaging it in a way that will enter your brain for and hopefully stay there for a very long time. Which sounds more like education than news or journalism. But I believe that most people want to understand. They want to understand why this certain policy will work and the other one won't. Whether you call it journalistic integrity, scientific integrity, which I've spoken about before, or creator integrity, independent journalists have different freedoms from mainstream news. Also considering... Since the qualifications for doing this job are essentially non-existent, a lot of these mass-produced video essay channels will essentially use these aesthetic elements as a way to make you think that what they're saying is a lot more profound than what it actually is. Emphasizing the creator industry, or independent journalists on YouTube, only really have social credibility as a qualification. And when mistakes are made or mis-disinformation is spread, it comes down to the creator, maybe using their moral code to guide what they share. But this factually incorrect video from Johnny was picked up and critiqued by another creator. He did use the creator's help in future videos, but mainstream media making errors often share follow-up pieces for correction and or retract the original mistakes, much like scientific publishing. But this alternative media with independent journalists, video essay mini-documentary creators, don't need to. 
In this case, corrections were added to the description with no link to the critique video, whereas the critique video referenced the original video, putting corrections and omitted information in the pinned comment. With Johnny saying, I think the idea of trusting your viewer to go fact check everything you say is irresponsible and naive. Does that also hold true for going to find corrections and omitted information? If so, shouldn't corrections and omissions be in a re-upload of the video? In a different plagiarism situation, Alan said, What I don't like about this is that when you actually genuinely have a mistake, you take down your video, you fix it, and you re-upload it. GCP Grey has done this in the past alongside many other education creators. Tom Scott recently doing a video about all his past mistakes. Maybe journalism is different? But Johnny has now added sources, which, as the Faultline channel said, The first one is sourcing. Adding sources to a video description or through a linked public Google Doc is a great way to add credibility to your video. Now, looking at a recent video source doc, Sources Article 25, with no direct link. The quote shown in the source doc was reworded in the video from the article, and the article cited has the quotes but it sources other articles, meaning it isn't the original source. The second source in the Google Doc is also not original and says 229, the number of people said in the video, but the original source actually says 203. Just a couple of recent examples of source interpretation or rewording. This is an example where video rewording potentially led to inaccurate claims. First, what it means is that the US is giving, giving nuclear submarine technology, its most powerful and advanced weapon, freely to Australia. Here. They didn't give it for free, they paid for it. It was $368 billion. It was $368 billion. I like screen sources, so I know what source relates to what part of the video. Johnny's timestamps are okay, but I don't know what is sourced in the video until I go looking. In some cases, a little bit more than I would like. A quick point here, clarifications and misunderstandings left in the comments section also seem questionable. Maybe add them to the description or pinned comment or wherever the other corrections are put. The joke Sue video still hasn't been sourced at the time of making this video, which you could argue is plagiarism. However, YouTube's fair use makes plagiarism extremely difficult to police. Because of a little thing called fair use, the extremely important legal doctrine that allows creators to upload content that isn't theirs. And in order for content to fall under fair use, it must be transformative and add new meaning to the material. Which Johnny does. He transforms and adds new meaning to the source material. So legally, nothing wrong. Ethically and or morally, Maybe? Again, thinking about journalistic or creator integrity. Copyright is checked, but... Is to give creators the ability to search for copyright matches to their own content, and even use it for takedowns. However, this tool does have its limits. It only works with exact or near exact content matches, to such a point where it's mostly only useful in blatant content theft cases. And inspiration is not plagiarism, and neither is quoting something word for word with proper permissions and citings. And creators in some of these situations have said, I don't think there's anything like necessarily wrong with like copying to a certain level. But the certain level is different for everyone. Mainstream media copy. They tell the same stories, but with different spins. Which, referring to the earlier quote, the internet has allowed for the proliferation of false or misleading news stories. Leading to things like this. This all started because of the sentence activists, which isn't even accurate, by the way. The activists did not say that this helped perpetuate the stereotype that Africa is dependent on handouts. That's what the aspiring politician said. The activist, singular, said a whole different sentence. This is just a misquote. It's a malattributed quote. I don't know why the fuck Yahoo News did that. An example of a source being used, but misused. So, so I think just the fact that most of these videos are factual and just have a topic that they cover, it's ripe for plagiarism. But plagiarized content, slightly adjusted by someone unfamiliar with the nuance of the topic, could lead to mis-disinformation. 
Rewording articles or using AI, for example. The problem is an epidemic of mis- and disleading content made to scam your attention, written and read by bots created by probably nefarious individuals for monetary gain alone. This quote relates to AI-generated content with seemingly minimal human intervention, but could also be applied, in moderation, to those telling stories with limited expertise. As independent creators... That's absolutely right. I rent space on a Google technology platform. I rent space. I don't own that space. I don't own an audience or anything. Like, I, I, I rent it. In this case, YouTube, you could then argue YouTube is responsible for maintaining creator integrity. Accuracy, fairness, objectivity, balance, and transparency. But with fair use and free speech laws adding lots of complexity, the guidelines are very flexible. We may allow content that violates the misinformation policies noted on this page if the content includes additional context in the video, audio, title, or description. Suggesting debates or discussions about news stories is educational, documentary, scientific, and or artistic where I think Johnny's and most essay-style creators fall. Educational. Now, he has mentioned he wants to... Where more and more news and journalism happens here, with independent journalists like myself, who want to continue to create work that maintains journalistic rigor, but want to do that journalism in a place where they can have a more personal back and forth with their audience. Sounding like discussion and debate over news reporting also saying... Not everyone who has a point of view and who is famous has ideas worth hearing or debating in our society. I really believe that. Which sounds like gatekeeping bias, the preference for selecting stories from one party or the other. But he says... But as someone who's independent, my only mandate is to connect with my audience, yes, on a rented platform. So the presentation, integrity, and discussions around the educational content he shares is focused on connecting with a type of audience. And renting the space on YouTube means... Big creators have videos that work very well. And also, it's not really their fault. Creators aren't implementing TikTok tactics like this because they're trying to trick you. They're doing it because this content is what YouTube systems have told them is working. Which could result in comments like... My conclusion is sadly that I don't think that Johnny's videos have lived up to his promise of simplifying economics because they too often oversimplify economics. Whether oversimplification is mis-disinformation is up for debate. Whether the intentions or presentation of information can impact how fake it seems is also up for debate. But media integrity is something the mainstream media have. The creator industry is yet to really figure it out. On YouTube... Everyone is somewhere between one and 99% not being truthful in their content. With scientific articles saying things like, we also find that social network sites play an outsized role in generating traffic to fake news, and our digital natives may be able to flit between Facebook and Twitter while simultaneously uploading a selfie to Instagram and texting a friend, but when it comes to evaluating information that flows through social media channels, they are easily duped. The BBC did a piece about AI YouTube education with one child saying, I find it really interesting that parents can make electricity. Which, for those unsure, isn't true. But a teacher also said, We don't question, do we? It's not just not in our wiring to do that. Again, emphasising the importance of integrity in media. YouTube creators as media companies. We got video by Johnny Harris, story producer, production manager, editing... So, like, basically, he doesn't do anything. Johnny started doing most, if not all, of the work, but now with the team, it isn't all him. So maybe not creator integrity, but media integrity. And just as news outlets have adapted to media trends, the way people watch, read, and listen to news has changed, and these changes aren't without consequences. The same could be said about YouTube and creating media for the algorithm, for money. 
letting integrity slip. However, with YouTube not making uploaded video edits easy and seemingly penalising re-uploads, there is financial risk with video retractions. Communication is obviously complex, but on platforms like YouTube, which is being used to educate, creator, media, integrity may need to be monitored by more than YouTube and those playing the YouTube game, including me. Dustin's video series about misinformation online and the crash course on digital information are great resources. But as fake news has been described as an informational moral panic, I would argue scientific research skills and practices should be applied to YouTube videos, especially those looking to educate. But what that looks like is obviously up for debate. I enjoy YouTube education, which is why I want it to do well. And Johnny makes great videos, but the stylized representation and or presentation can cloud the journalistic integrity that he claims to have. The quality of sourcing, corrections, retractions are the main steps I would focus on for feedback. But ongoing conversations about topics doesn't seem to be best placed on YouTube. Yes, Johnny was the topic of conversation for this video, but I think all of the principles apply to every creator on the internet, not just YouTube. I do my best to have sources in the description, corrections and retractions easily available and accessible, and I have a peer review process that goes on in Discord, so if you do want to engage in that before a video goes live, there is a link in the description below, and the same thing for ongoing conversation of any video topic that's on this channel. So let me know your thoughts in the comments or I'll see you in Discord.